Today's little project is a uh, friend of mine brought me this uh, Atari 1040 ST and he bought it online and somebody had dropped a soda in it and uh, he asked if I could uh, change out uh, these little uh, pads right here and it's got a little bit of soda corrosion just about everywhere so uh, I'm just going to go ahead and do this for him, and I'm sure he can take care of the rest. Alright, first thing we got to do is take the board out, and he was kind enough to already get the screws and everything out of it, so all I got to do is lift it up, and then I'll set this um, up on the, set this up out of the way. Let's uh, let's have a look at the uh, back of the board if I can uh, get to it. Let's see. Well, it looks like I'm gonna have to do a little bit of research on how to get this board out of here, and I'll show you how I do it. Okay, the board has these uh, little tabs all over the place around the board, and they just kind of go up, and then you twist uh, you twist them. Uh, they go up and then you twist them like that and they grab the board. So, uh, and the reason I couldn't do it before is it was kind of grabbing right here. So let me get this out and turn it over and get this other plate out of the way here. Just for uh, grins here, this is what it looks like inside. And here's the bottom of the board. And I'll be working over here on this side. All right, first thing we gotta do is take all these uh, chips out of here and uh, they're all numbered too so it's a little hard to mix them up like you got a 150 this is a 151 that's a 152 and you got 153 4 and 5 so it starts on the left and goes up like this so you can take them all out and put them in some uh, ESD uh, protective gear and then I can start removing these all right, there's a couple ways to remove these. I usually like to just stick a like a, a pick in there and lift them up each side at a time so you don't bend it too much. And let's see, and try not to pry into any components on the board. You might break them, so just go straight up like this. There you go. That's why I'm going to replace these right here. All right, and then you can put your chip over on a ESD mat, and I have an ESD safe station, so that's not going to bother nothing. So let me get all the rest of these out. Oh, the reason this one's missing is because he's already pulled it out, and I believe two of the pins were rotted off. So he bought some new RAM. You can get those online. And uh, anyways, let me get to it. All right, I got them all out. Let's uh. See if we can't get a zoom in on some of this. Let's get some more light over here. There we go. Yeah, they're looking pretty sad. <laughs> I just noticed something kind of funny. My camera's doing some weird pixelating stuff. That's kind of neat. So let me pause it and start over. I want to show you something here. This is called the desolder sucking tool. And what it does is it sucks solder in here through this tube. This is the holder. And then the vacuum is right here. And what happens is the cotton right here, or the filter, catches the solder. And you can see there's some in there still around the glass and stuff. Let's get it over here. You can see it reflect better. And it's pretty good. This is a paste machine. And, uh, here it is here it has a uh, it's a rework station basically it's got a soldering tip you can change all the different tips on it and it's got a hot air and it's got some uh, resistive tweezers it makes doing a 
job a lot better. Uh, this is a little high for what I'm going to be doing, so I need to drop the temperature. I'm going to take it down to around 680. That's good. Boom. All right, and then the soldering iron. That's about right. That's fine. Okay, so let's get to it. Let me put this back together. Oh, one thing is that these tubes plug up sometimes right down in there. Let's see if I can focus on it. So what I usually do is I take a resistor lead that's approximately the same size and I hold on to it and I shove it in here while I'm sucking. And then I clean my tube back out. And then it starts working pretty good again. Alright, after you cleaned your tube out, you stick it in the holder and then you put the holder in here that and you release the uh, side catch here Boom. and then you can heat up your solder joint and suck it dry so let me get to it all right let's give it a whirl put it on there and you kind of squiggle it a little bit suck it out that's kind of how it works we uh blow it up a little bit Sure beats solder wick by a long shot. Thing is, you got to be careful with them, otherwise you tear up your boards and your pads. And some people will actually alternate like this, so the board doesn't get too hot in one area. One thing to uh, pay attention to is uh, the chip holders are plastic. So if you stay on there too long, you could actually melt in your chip holder. So if you want to reuse it, you just kind of get your technique down. Well, oh, I think that was part of it. Yeah, it was. That's a ground plan. They're usually harder. So you got to set it on there for a couple extra seconds and then try to do it. And that one's going to be a booger. So let me get the other ones out. Okay, I got a couple holes that are really being difficult. What you do is you take a little bit of uh, solder flux, RMA, liquid flux, and you put it on there and you get some solder on it and you uh, basically reflow the hole and then you can go back at it with your solder sucker again. Alright, I got some big solder beads built up on there. What happens is, is that the uh, this area right in here acts like a big heat sink and it won't allow the solder to melt all the way through the board so you just put a big ball on it and let it sit on there for a few more extra seconds and then try to suck it out and sometimes it'll work sometimes it won't if it doesn't work then you uh, then you go ahead and you use an iron and you pry up on the other side gently <laughs> while it's liquid and that'll work Another thing you can do is preheat up the pad area around it uh, before you put your sol solder sucker on it. So let's see, uh, where are you? There you are. Okay. Let's see if it wiggles back and forth. Sorry for the uh, light reflection there. Alright, let's see if that works. Maybe rotate it around. Yeah, it looks like it might have got it. Yeah, it's just a little a little trick you can use. Where is it? Where'd it go? There it is. Let's see if this one came out too. It doesn't look like that one did. Okay, after you sucked all your solder holes out, remove the solder. You want to make sure that the pin it's free. See that one's not really free. And that one is. See it just moves real easy and this one doesn't. Some of these don't. You have to break the mechanical bond of the solder in the hole. Otherwise what happens when you pull it out, it'll take the inside of the hole out. Alright, one of my favorite methods to uh, break that internal mechanical bond is to use the right pair of right angle uh, pliers. And just kind of rock them back and forth like this. 
and anyone that doesn't come free after that then a lot of times I'll just reflow it and, and uh, re-suck the solder back out of it and nine times out of ten that fixes it and it's free then I can remove the uh, uh, the dip or whatever's in there dip socket all right so now that I've done that I've got my scribe and or dental tick or whatever I'm going back and checking them again that one looks there it goes if they move freely they're broke see that one's not so you might be able to push on it don't do it too much because if it's got too much solder in it then you could strip the barrel internally you don't want to do that so that one is still giving me problems I'm gonna bend that one over a little bit to mark it as needing more work that one too that one Wow, just about all these over here. So I'm going to go back at them again with the uh, solder sucker. See if that'll work. Okay, I've gone back over them with the solder sucker. So let's see if they're loose now. See how easy they move now? That's what you want. There we go. Even that one. Let's see this one. Yeah, it's working good. One, two. That one's a little stiff, but it looks like it moved. Tell me when they break free, you'll hear like a little snap, kind of like, kind of like a that. This one's still tight. All right, I'm gonna go back after that one that was tight. That one right there. Let's see, which one was that? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven. Looks like number seven. Yeah, I got heated up. There we go. Alright. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, let's go back at it. And a lot of times you can tell if you get it right because it'll try to drop out just like that there you go let's see if, oh there it goes so I got them all free okay Oops, this is the one I was doing did there it is let's go have a look here yeah so it looks like I have to clean them up a little bit looks like there was a little bit of corrosion on the board right here I'll have to play with Tried soda pop or something. Not sure what it is. So I'll go clean all these holes up. Well, I'll go ahead and remove the other five, and then I'll go back and clean them all up. I'll put some uh, solder flux on them, and then retin them. Make sure everything, all the barrels are cleaned, and then I'll go ahead and drop in uh, the new uh, dip sockets, and then reinstall these. I'll clean these pins up too. The ones that are all corroded and stuff looking nasty I'll clean them up real good with a blade and then reflow them okay talk with you guys later